Kurt Cobain. Not one name in rock history has ever had so much stigma, so much iconicism. That's definitely not a word. And you're probably looking at the title now saying, what is this kid on? Kurt Cobain was a sloppy player, man. He just wrote good songs and had a good voice simple songs. Well today I feel like I'm in court right now defending my case that Kurt Cobain was a better guitar player than you think and it all boils down to this one riff. The starting point, the stepping stone, if you will, for Kurt Cobain's entire career is the 1989 release, Bleach. Dave Grohl wasn't even on the scene yet. A guy named Chad Channing was on, on drums. How crazy is that? This album is full of searing riffs, and you could tell Kurt was trying to prove himself as a good guitar player. In this album, we'll find the riff in question, Mr. Mustache, a song written based off of an experience Kurt had with a macho man in his adolescence, apparently. So yeah, just remember when we're learning this riff, it's based around big, hairy, sweaty, sweaty macho, macho man, redneck man. Now, of course, since this is a Nirvana video, I had to bust out the 11 pound Jaguar. For this Mr. Mustache riff, I think Kurt used his childhood guitar. I don't think the Jaguar, the signature Jack was in the picture yet. So yeah, let's get into what this riff has to offer. There's only one thing I like almost as much as Kurt Cobain, and that is chromatic riffs on guitar. They're littered across the rock scene. You got Master of Puppets, Hey Joe, and this Mr. Mustache riff is a chaotic chromatic sequence, pretty much different than any other Kurt Cobain recording you've probably heard. Now this riff is in the key of G. This will come up again later in the video when we cover the potential plagiarism of the song, but I can't count my chickens before they hatch. I'll run through it slowly. Oops. See, I'm already messing up. It's a hard riff. What can I say? But essentially, Kurt starts on the root note, third fret of the low E string, goes immediately to the second fret of the A string. Third fret E, A. That's a chromatic walk down, as classic as it gets. Third fret, second fret, first fret, open low E. And then we turn it back around. The first two bars of the song hit this variation on the second fret of the A string. And on that third bar, on that cheeky third bar, we hit the first fret of the A string. And that is our second variation. Then we go back. Now there is a pattern of hitting the second fret of the A and then the first fret of the A during this riff. To me, at first, it felt completely random. And that threw me, I don't know what it threw me, but it threw me. Throughout this riff, Kurt is just constantly switching up from the first fret of the A string to the second fret of the A string on the turnaround. And then if you have a hard time palm muting, well, good news, this song has it too. Classic Kurt Cobain power chord. I'm sure he's using his first and third finger, but I like to use a my first finger at my pinky. A very Metallica-like jug in there. The song wraps up by going to a major key, which is a nice contrast. So then he's like, a B to C, and then he goes back to G. But I don't want to dive too much into this riff. There's plenty of great covers all over the internet. I want to touch on my next subject, sloppy accuracy. Now, most guitar players are taught that open strings are bad. And when you are given a melody, you got to stay right between those lines. But sometimes sloppy is a good thing. 
Now for the longest time, I was playing Smells Like Teen Spirit with straight up bar chords. I was covering Smells Like Teen Spirit incorrectly for years. The way Kurt held his power chords with his first finger and his third finger, and the way he was just so aggressive on the strings caused other notes to ring out within that two note power chord. Now we're sounding much more curty. Thank you very much. I'll be here all night. And in a full circle moment, that's what makes this Mr. Mustache riff so challenging to me. Kurt is constantly keeping it random and it makes it impossible to replicate. And that brings me a couple years in the future to the In Utero album. In that album, we'll find the song Milk It, which I have never learned before, so I'm gonna give it a shot here. What the hell is that? Uh oh. Am I really messing up on a Kurt Cobain riff? Now, the intro of Milk It was full of this random noodle nonsense which is just so much more difficult than having a straightforward melody kurt is bouncing all over the place there was no rhythm no chordal structure yeah what the hell so when you put it to tablature and when you start to learn it it just doesn't click in your brain because as humans we like to find patterns that is so weird i what and he's up at the 5th fret. Thank gosh, it's almost over. The only pattern that did come in was uh, during the verses. But other than that, there is just nothing. It's a void of notes. And I'm pretty sure Kurt was literally in the studio, just head down on his guitar, picking out whatever came to him at that moment in time. I was literally learning Dragon Force in the last video. It seems like there's some kind of structure to the notes that Kurt's playing in the intro, but then again, it just seems completely random. Now I could see some of you arguing, oh, Kurt wasn't really trying. If it's just random notes, he has no techniques. Kurt was never trying to play perfect. It was always a battle of emotions when he picked up a guitar. Thanks to this sloppy accuracy, Kurt hitting extra notes and adding in a couple extra strums. I personally find it very hard to sound like Kurt Cobain. Here we go again with the sloppy power chords. Oh, okay, okay. Even when you're playing power chords, I recommend you slow down when you're first learning a riff. It sounds wicked now because I'm being sloppy with how I play my chords. If I just played it straight, it would sound so lame. He's using that percussive technique, continuously strumming that right hand aggressively. It just adds so much more flavor. What? Huh? I, I don't know. Kurt has been here for the past six hours playing the same noodle nonsense. Chris, can you help me out here, man? So apparently Mr. Mustache is a direct ripoff of a band from 1967 called The Raiders. Their song Hungry has a similar uh, chromatic pentatonic riff. So I'm going to give it a listen here. Dude. Now even if you don't have an ear for music, it's clear that uh, these riffs bear striking similarity. And that's because they have the same chromatic walk down and turnaround. For Mr. Mustache, Kurt goes to his root note, a G, to signify the walk down. He hits this major B note here. It's in a major scale. So he goes. Paul Revere's on his root note here. 
goes to another, a major note to signify the turnaround. The only difference is Paul Revere goes to the five chord uh, for a little pentatonic turnaround. Kurt Cobain just goes down uh, another semitone. The only difference between these two songs is the fourth note on the turnaround. crazy. Now we have to keep in mind that Kurt was always listening to music, sifting through hundreds if not thousands of records. I bet that he once stumbled upon this song and thought to himself, hey, this would make a great soundtrack for this really messed up comic I have. And boom, we got Mr. Mustache. And boom, here I am covering Mr. Mustache. And boom, here I am again telling you that I covered Mr. Mustache. Boom! But again, if this were in a court of law, I am here defending Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. But this Mr. Mustache riff, it's through a combination of sloppy accuracy, speed, that makes it pretty hard to replicate compared to some other Nirvana tunes. 